twelve, four arcs, x squared times one plus x, four squared plus x squared minus eight times one plus x, four squared equals zero. This is the left hand side of the equation. We can see that there are some perfect squares, x squared and one plus x or squared. If we add two x times one plus x times x, then we can complete the square using the first three terms. As we added two x times one plus x times x. So we also add minus two x times one plus x times x, which can be written as minus two x squared times one plus x. We know that a squared plus two a b plus b squared can be written as a plus b or squared. By applying this, the terms underlined in red can now be written as the perfect square x times one plus x plus x or squared. The terms underlined in blue have a common factor minus two times one plus x. So they can be written as minus two times one plus x times x squared plus four times one plus x. The term underlined in red can be written as x squared plus two x or squared four times one plus x is equal to four x plus four x squared plus two x all squared can be written as x squared times x plus two all squared x squared plus four x plus four can be written as the perfect square x plus two all squared. We can see that the two terms have a common factor, x plus two or squared. So we can now write equals x plus two or squared times x squared minus two times one plus x minus two times one plus x equals minus two x minus two. So the original equation can now be written as x plus 2 or squared times x squared minus 2x minus 2 equals 0. So either x plus 2 or squared equals 0. So x1 equals x2 equals minus 2. Here we have a repeated root or x squared minus 2x minus 2 equals 0. So x equals 2 plus minus root of 4 plus 8 over 2. Root of 4 plus 8 can be written as 2 root 3 2 in the numerator and that in the denominator cancel. So x3 equals 1 plus root 3. x4 equals 1 minus root 3. So we found one repeated root and two other roots.